How far apart do you space your plants? There are many possibilities. If you space them closer, then they will be smaller. If you space them wider, they will be bigger. And not only at different spacings, but whether you plant in blocks or in rows, for example. So these celery here, they're spaced quite close together, around 25 centimeter, 10 inches in clumps. And that means as, as they grow up all equidistant to each other, they will cause some shade of the stems below and that there'll be a slight blanching effect. So that's a nice way to grow celery. Um, although you can also grow it in rows, but you won't get that effect. Um, planting in blocks has worked well for those beetroot there because we have birds here that eat the leaves, particularly when they're small. So when the seedlings are small, it's easy to cover a, a block planting in a bed rather than a row um, with netting. You, you cover more plants more effectively. Or sow or plant in rows like here. And particularly if you have a lot of weeds, that allows you to run a hoe between um, the space between the rows. So that's another option and you just need to work out your spacings accordingly. And we'll have a look now at some colour breeze because that illustrates some of the possibilities of how far apart you put your plants and how that affects the growth. There are two birds here which have colour breeze and lettuce. Both of these vegetables were sown late February in the greenhouse, planted early April, and then it's still very cold here at that time of year, so the beds were covered with fleece for about four weeks to keep the plants warm and help them to grow, get established. And that kind of thing is much easier when you have a, a block planting on a bed rather than a, a line in a row. And then for the calabrese, what spacing to use? Well, Last year I used a wider spacing of 18, 20 inches, roughly 45, even 50 centimetres and I got really big calabrese and because I'm selling some of them, the, the shop said no they're just too big, you know, people don't want to buy calabrese that big. So it just gives an idea of how you can vary the end result by changing the spacing. So this year they're closer at about 39 centimetres, 15 inches and the result is Medium-sized heads, they're not fully grown yet, which means you're not seeing the final result here. It'll be next week probably when we take the main cut of these. Uh, something else we'd be doing is taking off outer leaves like this. In case you're wondering, the plants look a bit denuded of leaves because we remove the older ones as they start to go a bit yellow and get eaten by insects. And you can see the central leaves are much cleaner and, and nicer. And you can also see how when they're, where they're in a block here, um, the, the ones in the middle particularly are very, can't sort of root widely so their spacing is totally governed by how many plants are around and the sort of competition that goes on with those neighbouring plants for food and moisture whereas on the end of the bed there's a, one or two bigger plants where they can root out further and that just shows how uh, spacing affects things. And then here in this bed we have lettuce that we've been cropping now for six weeks. <coughs> we come every week and take the outer leaves. And over the years, I found that this spacing here, which is around eight to nine inches or 20 to 22 centimeters, gives a very nice result of allowing the plant to live for a long time because there's a, it can develop a decent root run. Um, but also there's quite a few inner space. They're close enough to have lots of lettuce to pick. Uh, so it's balancing those two options and we're picking lots of medium leaves. We're not trying to get monster leaves. So if you space wider, you, you, you can get slightly larger leaves, closer you get smaller leaves. So there's all those things that one is taking into account. And these plants, in fact, should live <coughs> and crop for another four weeks or so, for, which means that one planting has given a, a really worthwhile result. And next we'll look at peas because that there's again many options to consider when you plant your peas. With peas there are actually two types of crop you can take, especially in the spring when they grow best anyway. So here we have the example of peas for shoots where the harvest we're 
taking is these lovely tips and they taste of pee. So for that, it works well to have them in a typical salad spacing, rather like the lettuce we just saw, maybe slightly wider. So they're actually at 20, 25, 30 centimeters. It, it varies a bit. Uh, these ones are actually 30 centimeters a foot apart. And when they started life, that looked like loads of space. You, you can plant pea shoots, peas four shoots more closely, <laughs> and then you'll get a, a bigger first harvest after six or eight weeks, but then the plants will run out of steam and won't carry on cropping for so long. Whereas these, at this spacing here, 30 centimeter, 12 inches, the plants, and there's two or three in each um, clump, they've been cropping for two months already and they're still going. So we've had a very long run of picks. It's a very time efficient way of doing it. And we planted them in March from a February sowing. By April, they were starting to fill out a bit. By May, it was looking quite abundant. We started picking in April. And you can see now how those plants that quite, what looked like quite far apart at the beginning have really filled this space and are making very efficient use of it. <clears throat> so that's pea shoes. If we now have a look at peas for pods, you'll see how the spacing is completely different. The peas in this long row are the same variety of pea planted at the same time as the bed we just saw for pea shoots and the same number of plants. But you can see the totally different effect from spacing them in a long row. They're at 15 centimeters, six inches apart in two narrow rows along the middle of the bed. And that's made it easy to support them as they grow up with this post and string method. So having a line sometimes rather than a block is very the way you want to go according to what you want. So these are for the pods and this variety alderman does make lovely fat pods but I do also use it for peas for shoots because it's a very vigorous variety. You can see how tall it has grown and from sowing only a little bit later actually than the ones there and so it's just very vigorous so it makes lots of shoots or lots of pods. And next we'll have a look at root vegetables because the considerations there are somewhat different and also whether you sow direct we'll look at some direct sown carrots in fact next up with root vegetables there's an important consideration which is if you space them too close you will get a lot of leaf and not so much root as in fleshy root edible so with carrots for example um, there's actually a further consideration which is carrots and parsnips are the two main vegetables are so direct because the bit we want to eat is the long taproot and transplanting that, that often breaks not always so it's simpler just to draw a line across the bed and sow in a row one could broadcast the seeds but the spacing would then be a little bit more haphazard and it would also be difficult to hoe so here we sowed rows uh, two months ago middle of April it's now middle of June and they're 22 centimeters nine inches apart that's the row spacing and then you've got the spacing in the row of each carrot which is about one centimeter half an inch not precisely though because it's very difficult to sew when you sew direct it's very difficult to be precise it takes a long time if you really want to be that precise so we, we get seeds in the hand and just sort of dribble them out so in places they they are too thick and then it's good to do a bit of thinning so I did that about three weeks ago here when I could see what was happening and pulled out some tiddly little carrots not even eating size just to get the rows more or less evenly spaced uh, here's an example where in fact I left a few more and you can do that as well within reason because then what you can do so now we're eight nine weeks after sowing and I'm going to pull this carrot which is the largest top that I can see in that little mini clump there and pulling one like this will mean more space for the others to grow oh blimey <laughs> it's quite hard it's actually very dry at the moment and that does make it more difficult I'm not sure this one's going to come out if I get my fingers around ah oh, that's a shame no it hasn't so I mean, you can see how basically there was a nice tack root there perhaps if I pull another one just to um, get that yeah this one's coming so 
I think this one would have actually been quite big. So that's what I was trying to do is pull the biggest one. That shows how sometimes it doesn't actually work. But basically that harvesting that I was doing there has been a sort of thinning and you can see now how there's a nice even spacing of what's left and it works really well then to keep coming back every few days and pull a few more. So from a, a clump of carrots like that you can have lots of harvest over a long period. This spacing allows allows you to see what's going on and just pull carrots every now and then to thin them out and let the rest grow on. So that's an example of direct sowing and then we'll have a look now at planting root vegetables. There are many vegetables which are not tap-rooted which you can transplant and here's an example multi-sown beetroot which we sow four seeds in a clump and transplant aiming for four seedlings add a spacing of these are actually quite close 30 centimeters to 12 inches and that means that the resulting harvest is of small to medium sized roots say between golf and tennis ball size rather than if you wanted larger roots you could go to 15 16 inches up to 40 centimeters or a bit more for each clump on an equidistant spacing and that actually gives a lot of beetroot in a small area and the reason I'm doing it like this is partly for earliness so this is quite an early harvest for beetroot at this time of year and also because pests we, we find here that um, birds eat the seedlings a lot the tiny leaves they really relish much more than the larger leaves and so earlier on this had net over and now it doesn't need it because the plants are big and robust so in these clumps what we do is um, take out you've got a clump of two three four or five and then I harvest one from that and you then see how you get a decent sized root and the remaining beech roots rather like the carrots that we just saw then have more room to grow on so you can using this method and this kind of spacing you can come back several times to a small area and take repeat harvests um, many times and this method also works very well for onions spring onions radish and turnips um, other root vegetables and just to finish off we'll look at a slightly different example which is potatoes so multi sowing wouldn't work for potatoes you just plant a potato that's kind of easy and the question is though what spacing to put it in at and here I've gone fairly close there are many options because it depends on the type of potato you're growing so for example first earlies which crop in June and then they stop growing so there's no point in giving them lots of space because they're never going to use it so first early potatoes that's the generic type make sure you know which type you are planting they can go in at as little as 30 centimeter 12 inches apart that's as tight as you'd want to go I reckon and that but that will give you lots of small first early potatoes really tasty here we have uh, a, a potato called Casablanca which in some descriptions is called a first early and is sometimes called a second early I've noticed so it's a bit in between the two and it does grow quite big as you can see so that works is working well on a slightly larger spacing where we've allowed around um, 42 centimeters 16 inches between each plant and you can see each plant is making lots of stems I'm actually going to harvest this one just so you can get an idea of how this has or hasn't worked I actually haven't pulled any yet from this row this is no dig so we're harvesting by pulling and that reveals what has grown under the leaves and stems and actually that is looking pretty nice so this is a a first early harvest where the tubers are coming out with not a lot of skin on that's a typical first early result you can see there's loads of them um, developing here so potatoes grow really well no dig and they're mostly developing in the surface compost which means they do come out nice and clean so if I stop there there's a few more tiddlers but you can see that's a nice result of first early potatoes from not taking up too much room we've got eight plants in this area here not huge and that's going to give quite a few kilos or pounds over the next couple of weeks probably